There we go. So, so when I hit record, it'll bring up like a little, like a little thing that they'll say either uh, decline or accept. But it's it's actually all, it's actually all good now. Okay. Great. So I always like to start off, like, what got us into this? But oh. kind of just kind of, kind of a little of a backstory. Yeah, sure. Um, I think my parents had a record player uh, in the basement and a few records down there from my stepdad. And I think the record player was broken, but I was just kind of always, uh, I don't know, enamored or infatuated with them. Like this technology, like from, you know, years ago. Um, but I, I would say I didn't really get into it until uh, I was in high school and I was really into this uh, emo indie rock band uh, called The Spill Canvas. Yeah. And uh, they released a uh, their album on vinyl and it included all these bonus tracks that the only way you could get it was if you bought the vinyl. And I was like, well, I have to have it. Um, so I think my, I think my mom bought it for me for my birthday. And anyway, I got it. I, uh, got the turntable up and going and I was hooked. Um, and so I started, uh, you know, listening to my stepdad's records and then it probably wasn't until 2011, uh, I graduated college, you know, college, you know, you're in this tiny dorm room with another person. It's not really, a uh, a good place to start collecting records so uh, when I got my I started sharing uh, this house uh, with a roommate and I had a little more space so anyway 2011 I started buying uh, my own records and going to record shops and then I was, was like really into it the, like with me there was always music in the house yeah so I I, I actually grew up with uh, CDs yep same yeah yeah so, kind of like one of my earliest memories was listening to uh, James Taylor. Oh, yeah. Like, we would always, every Sunday, we would listen to James Taylor and have pancakes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, that, that's kind of like one of my earliest memories. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, eventually, down the road about... 10 years ago my parents got me one of those all-in-one record players yes yes i i had that for a number of years but i eventually started to be curious like what was out there like besides the all-in-one so have having like a bigger setup yeah sure and of course I, ironically at that time i was looking at new gear that turntable broke Oh wow! <laughs> so 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 it was like perfect timing. Yeah, the timing was right. So, I eventually stepped up to the. It was the Audio Technica, the this Audio Technica turntable, mm -hmm. which I which I still have. Okay. Very nice. But, so so it definitely has expanded from those like four or five vinyl records to having something like this ikea Kalax uh case like, like it's a uh, two by four on which i have nice yeah it's it's amazing how fast it can multiply yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you had people want to give you records when they find out that you collect the, the, there are definitely some the records that i have that have been from that Mm -hmm. like similar but yeah. like one of my friends that I've known since like I, I can remember they had one of those collections where, where it's like a thousand records in their collection yeah I, I went over to their house and saw that they had a whole that they were doing like a garage sale and selling some of their records oh, so yeah. I looked and they had uh, John Lennon's uh imagine album nice so they actually gave me that for free oh very nice 
very cool. Um, yeah, you talk about the like the soundtrack to your youth. You know, your parents play music. My um, my dad, anytime he would like clean or work out, it was uh, John Cougar Mellencamp uh, always on. So I uh, I love listening to that. Yeah. It makes me think of my dad. Yeah, and uh, I actually just watched a, a video of uh kind of like that you did where it's like five records that are really important yeah and actually just got me thinking of like pulling out five records that are like really important and one of them actually happens to be uh, so like this is the album that i grew up with but it was on cd mm -hmm. yeah so like that definitely brings back a lot of uh, memories oh but, yeah yeah it's it's amazing how your mind attaches that um like you just start hearing that song and you can just send you back yeah as well as like uh the this is the most ex expensive record i've ever bought mm -hmm. just because i think they only made five thousand. Oh yeah and, and they haven't released any other reissues oh yeah so it's uh russia's snakes and arrows album oh cool and it's on a uh, double lp oh cool i i actually haven't listened to that one is that so is that a is that a live album or a is that it's actually that that's actually like the full-on album and they did eventually do like a live recording mm -hmm. of a uh, concert for that tour oh okay very cool yeah i, I really uh really like rush we got some great stuff. <laughs> so uh, one question that I thought of like right before this was uh, how did you get the name of, of Rock Lake? Uh, uh, that would be uh, my wife. Uh, well, and my son. So um, he's uh, he just turned four, but uh, he was eating and he at the time he was really into uh, broccoli and I was talking about doing this, uh, making some YouTube videos and, um, and my, my wife was like, Oh, what if you call it broccoli? Like, uh, you know, uh, vegetables are good for you. Music's good for you. And do a play on that. But I know it's, it's funny. Cause I, uh, I just thought it was like unique. And then, uh, I, and, and because I've always said rockly, but uh, a lot of people struggle with the, it's a made up word, so they pronounce it differently and it doesn't bother me, but you know, <laughs> but yeah, that's the, that's the story behind it. And my, yeah. and my wife drew the logo, if you've ever seen that with like the, yeah. um, the little guy, the little broccoli playing guitar or whatever. <laughs> I, I saw that uh, yellow well, it looks like a box set right behind you mm -hmm. where it almost has like a like the spine it almost has like holes in it uh this one but, yeah but what uh, what what oh uh, uh, what it's a bob's burgers <laughs> soundtrack yeah. so <laughs> that, that that i i haven't seen the entire like all the episodes but i've seen like a handful Oh yeah, so so I I kind of like I'm kind of somewhat into it. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah my um again my wife uh loves that show and we watch that together and I, I really enjoy it too. Um, was it the voice actor for Bob? Uh, is it John H. Benjamin? I think is his name, but he does the voice of Archer, a bunch yeah. of other uh characters on that like yeah. uh, uh what's it called is it's uh night oh, why can't i think of it adult swim adult yeah. swim yeah yeah I, i've seen like one or two episodes of uh archer mm -hmm. because that that's a show that my dad would watch yeah so, so like every like if we did have time we would watch like an episode mm-hmm and and it definitely isn't well, especially it being on Adult Swim, not 
not for kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely an adult cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I think it came out when I was in college. My roommates and I would watch it. Pretty funny. So, um, is there any like genre of music that is kind of like one that at least like one or two genres that you listen the most right De definitely under the the rock umbrella yeah. i've gotten way more into uh metal um probably in the last five six years yeah um it was something i was more of a indie um emo pop punk in high school uh I listened to that a lot um and then uh, after I graduated college, I started listening to like uh, The Smiths, The Cure, that kind of stuff. And then uh, later on, I got more into like Judas Priest, Black Sabbath. Um, and then I've gotten like just here in the last couple of years, like really deep into more extreme metal, the death metal and yeah. black metal stuff I've been listening to and it's funny because I, I never imagined I, I would enjoy that really heavy extreme music and it's just honestly from watching these vinyl community videos and seeing uh people like you know so passionate about albums that I'm like how in the you know because when when you first turn on like death metal and you hear that like you know those yeah. growly you know cookie monster vocals you know, I immediately was turned off, but I was like, no, there's something to this. Like, what, like, I want it to click. And I really made it a, like, I started asking, like, some people I knew in the metal community, what, you know, what, what is going to get me into this genre? Like, how do I like, like this? Like, cause I just did not understand. And, uh, so I, I really made it a point to listen and try to, um, figure out what it is and uh, it definitely like one, once it clicks it clicks um uh, but uh, it's a uh, my my wife hates it she she thinks it's trash so <laughs> like i like i kind of grew up with the whole like rock genre mm -hmm. but definitely like very similar i've been listening to a bit more and more like metal mm -hmm. and Back in November of 2019, it was an event here in a here in a, a, um LA. Oh yeah, uh, it they had a Jay Weinberg of us a, a Slipknot. Oh yeah, so he he was doing a, a drum like a drum class. Oh, very cool. And I actually went. Yeah. When he would play, like he played like a handful of uh, Slipknot songs, it was at like some venue where it only held like fifty people. Whoa. Well, like probably like fifty to like a hundred people. Okay. And of course, when you he, he would play, there was like a mosh pit, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, and that's definitely one thing I definitely that I'll take away from that. But like, especially no matter what genre, when I saw the crowd, there were fans that were getting emotional because on how important Slipknot means to them. Oh yeah, yeah, very passionate. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and it's like what? Yeah, it's like I It's like man, I want to figure. I want to be that passionate. I want to. Yeah. I want to know why. Well, well, just like besides being passionate, you could tell that. Like fans were crying because they helped help them through some sort of oh yeah dark time oh yeah yeah and that that was definitely my connection with uh you know more emo music in high school definitely uh, that like yeah how artists can articulate these emotions and feelings and you, you can just instantly relate yeah, yeah. and it's this band that I've been listening to since probably for the past 
14 years. Mm -hmm. uh, how I heard about them, one of my friends made like a uh, one of those mixtapes, but for uh, CDs. Yeah. Where it's just like a bunch of like random artists. And this band was on that uh, mixtape, uh, Skillet. Oh, yeah. This is their uh, Rise album, which came out in 2013. And it definitely is an album that is very important because it definitely represented like a unique time for me. Mm -hmm. So every time when I listen to that, it kind of not, not really brings back memories, but like definitely makes makes me feel this album is like extremely, like extremely important. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it... Uh... It, it, it kind of reminds me of the whole, um, you know, should we judge artists separately from their music? Um, I don't know if you've heard the, that conversation of like, you know, sometimes an artist will do uh, illegal things or questionable things in, in their personal lives. And then it, you know, then there's like, oh, I'm going to, the mob, like, I'm going to burn all their CDs or like, you know, throw away. I'm never going to buy music from them. And then, but then there's the other argument of like, you know, their their art is separate from them. Like, because of my attachment and the, to their music, and like it became it's something else to me. Yeah. Like, I don't care about them, the person, like what they made. I have an attachment to, yeah. um, so I, you know, I keep that separate from the artist. Yeah. Um, yeah. I tend to be more that way, but I think. I'm not saying that an artist can't do something where I would be like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I've seen so many things where it's like, especially with people that are in the music world that are covered up in tattoos. Mm -hmm. And when people see them, they think that they're like mean or rude or they're oh, like, yeah. like, they're like they have like this certain perception. Sure. But yeah. There are times where I've met people like that, nicest people. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like I think I uh, stayed away from metal music when I was younger, just because I was like scared or yeah. afraid of it. <laughs> I was definitely like, it's like, whoa, this is scary. <laughs> well, well, kind of as this relates to what I said about going to this uh, Jay Weinberg Slipknot class, there were definitely were people that were like tatted up, uh, ear piercings to like, just like that. But like, I would talk to them. You wouldn't, like, it's kind of, a, some people have a hard time putting the two together. But like having the nice personality, but also like being covered up in tattoos. Oh, just yeah. like being able to talk to people that like they don't care on like what you think of them right yeah it's definitely a misconception that yeah people with tattoos or leather studs or uh mohawks or anything are are not nice because that is uh the is a very bad misconception and generalization because just because somebody dresses very you know, alternative doesn't mean that they're not going to be nice to you. Yeah. yeah. But are, are, are there, like, any artists that kind of give, like, a handful of artists that you would, that you always listen to? Oh. Uh, probably uh, The Smiths. Um, yeah. a lot Morrissey his solo stuff uh, uh, Candlemas uh, Solitude Eternus uh, definitely play a lot and then I I don't know I tr I listen to a lot of new stuff like new to me stuff yeah um, all the time too uh, recently recently gotten really into uh, uh, Sabotage wearing a shirt now uh, heavy metal band 
uh, it's yeah, fantastic. Um, they're, they've been reissuing all their catalog here lately and I've been picking them all up and they're just all so good. But uh, what about you? Uh, definitely one of them, like one of the bands that I listen to a lot is uh, Rush. Yeah. But uh, also I was, I, I definitely do. I've also been lis kind of listening to a uh, Switchfoot lately. Like, oh, yeah. but like I've been listening to their music for the like a number of years. Mm -hmm. I've definitely been listening to them a bit more and more. Yeah. Um. No. Yeah. I don't. I don't think I have anything by Switchfoot. But. Um. Yeah. Because what's what's one of their big big songs? I'm trying to think. Uh, but, well, well kind of like the two that pop up. That they always play in concert is a, uh, a meant to live. Okay. And also, and also, um, it's um, dare you, uh, dare you to move. Oh yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I think is a yeah. Have you ever watched a uh, Rick Beto on YouTube? He does like music theory stuff and uh, oh oh him. I yeah, think I. Didn't he produce? I think he produced a few Switchfoot albums. I, I'm I'm not sure about like producing, but probably at least like some sort of level of helping. But I also know that he produced uh, a Need to Breathe, which is in that same like Need okay. to Breathe is in the, in that same genre style. Style, yeah. Okay. Um. Well, very cool. I actually do have a uh, two uh, Smith, uh, Smith records. Oh yeah, I, I like there's somewhere in my collection, but I have to go through. It's uh I can't remember the their name like the name of the albums, mm -hmm. but it's uh like one of them is like kind of like a red, uh like the entire album is red uh um. Oh, a red cover. Hmm. Um, if it's orange, it, I I was it's probably more like an orange. Okay, it might be louder than bombs, which is a compilation they did, uh, which is really good. I. Um, is there like a like a lady on the front? Yeah, I think I think it's it must be louder yeah. than bombs if it's yeah. Yeah, it actually is that. So, okay yeah that's a that's a fantastic one i think my first one was a hat full of hollow and it's a like a blue a baby blue cover with a guy on the front but um it has uh an alternative version of uh this charming man on it that's really good and uh oh gosh i can't remember the other track but it's all it. yeah. that's what really I, got, I bought that and then uh i was uh on a mission to find all their other stuff and <laughs> go down the rabbit hole i would say at least one of my records in my collection that is important is uh it's uh this album oh yeah so it's a a Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin, yeah, and, and uh, um, Alice, um, it was um um Al um Allison Krauss, yep, yeah, fantastic. Like, people weren't expecting Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin to do like a bluegrass album. No, yeah, but it's one album that I do listen to a lot, like a lot, and I've been listening to it since it came out. Yeah, he he's de he definitely has um, his solo stuff is you know way different than Led Zeppelin, yeah. but uh, and I can't remember um, one of his more recent solo albums where it's a kind of like a profile of him and it's like a red cover. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 
I, I'm not too familiar with his solo stuff. Um, well, if you like that Alison Krauss one, I think uh, you really dig it. I want to pull it up here real quick. And it, it's really somber, kind of more of like a singer songwriter um, kind of album. And it is called Carry Fire. It came out in 2017. Um, I'll try to you can see that cover. But uh, gosh, that one's good. I, I listen to that one a lot. Um, but it's really like, like I said, like very uh, non Led Zeppelin. <laughs> uh, but it's great. Yeah. I actually happen to have seen a Robert Plant in concert. Oh, yeah? That it was probably about 10 years ago. It was at, it was at a, uh, like, like an iconic LA venue here in, I, uh, it's, I think it's called the Shrine. And it's been here since like the 20s. Yeah. And it's actually right, right where uh, USC is. Oh, okay. So I saw him there. Like, he did play a lot of his solo stuff, mm-hmm. but he did play a number of uh, Zeppelin tunes. Really? But he took the Zeppelin tunes and did, like, a Middle Eastern flair. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> but, but uh, of course, he played a uh, uh, whole lot of love. Oh, yeah. But, but they took it and did like a very like blues, like uh, kind of like a Louisiana blues style intro. Okay. But then eventually, which eventually led into the iconic uh, guitar intro. Oh, okay. Very cool. Yeah, I would imagine, gosh, what the, has he been playing music for like? 30 40 years you know he probably wants to change up those songs a little yeah. bit over but, time well i think partly because that whole like blues is what he grew up with mm-hmm. especially from like being like from like the 60s but like being like a teen in like the 60s oh yeah and being exposed to that like the previous a, a, a generation of music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. So I, I, I bet it was fun to do playing a style of music from your childhood. Oh, yeah. Good thing. Now, are, are you a, it's kind of off topic, but are you a USC fan? I, I, I really don't follow college that much Mm -hmm. but it's actually like i either go with uh uh, cal poly which is they have uh two locations in uh san luis obispo up in uh like the central coast and one down in uh like that's actually down here in the uh, southern california uh and uh, it's it's either Cal Poly or uh, University of uh, Michigan. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I I asked just because I, uh, USC um, has joined the Big Ten, which yeah. is where you know Indiana University. I grew up in yeah. Bloomington, where Indiana University is, and so that's like a big deal. Everybody's talking about them joining the conference here. Um, but I got I just got a warning that we have nine minutes left yeah. on uh, have you gotten that before the little timer thing yeah okay yeah. so, so it's it's something that I that I am a, a, a familiar with okay <laughs> but um would you have I, any more questions I think that wraps up the whole thing Okay. Oh, so um, uh, 
I uh, went back and I, I watched some of your videos, but um, do you, what's your like plan for the future or like with your channel or? I, I think still doing a lot of um, album reviews to mm -hmm. a lot of like uh, gear reviews. Yeah. But also definitely still doing stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went back at, uh, oh, was it Groovy Lisa? Yeah. Talked to her. Yeah, so I, I watched some of that one. Um, yeah, they, yeah, these are fun. Yeah. Um, uh, there was something else I was going to ask you. But I don't remember. <laughs> oh, well, I, so did you grow up out in California? Yeah. Very cool. Um, it seems like another, I don't know. Like it's its own country. <laughs> yeah. But, like I, I've I've grown up here in like the greater LA area. Mm -hmm. One thing that I've never gotten used to is the traffic. Oh yeah. Like even just going like like twenty miles, you have to plan like for it, like the 20 miles to take like a two hours or something. Wow. But, but like, like it takes like, you have to like really plan ahead, especially during certain times of the day. Oh, like, no. Especially on Friday around like when people get off work, it's just like. Nuts. It, it, like, when I, especially on days that I come home, home from work on Fridays is just like it's something that I dread oh I bet just on how crazy it gets uh that's something my wife and I talk about we um here in Evansville you can just you can get to any part of the city yeah. five o'clock on a Friday take you 20 minutes <laughs> like at most <laughs> well like I actually have family that lives in um Kalamazoo, Michigan. Okay. Which is actually where Gibson Guitars is from. Oh, cool. Yeah. A and like my uncle, like where like where he works, it takes like five minutes. Oh yeah. <laughs> but like they always like he always like gets mad if it takes like an extra minute. Just like that's such a small town. Yeah. But like ha having it take like an extra minute or like two minutes is like painful. Oh yeah, or uh, if there's not like parking right outside mm -hmm. of whatever <laughs> establishment you're going to, people love to complain about that. <laughs> Where it's like I'm sure you have to like walk blocks and blocks. Yeah. Wherever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my buddy, he used to live in New York, uh, New York City, and he didn't even have a car. He was like, it's just a waste. <laughs> you just, yeah. you know, yeah. take the subway, yeah. taxi. Yeah. Walk. My, my dad has been in Michigan, either like in uh, Brooklyn or like Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's either walk, bike, uh, cab, or a, like the like the subway. Yep. Because, like, just on how crowded it is there, people don't even drive their own cars. Right. Yeah. Yep. It's a, uh, and there's pro, you know, obviously the bigger cities, I'm sure you have a lot of options as far as like yeah. record stores and, uh, well, like, like music but, venues and yeah. things like that. Well, like, I, I, I live in one of the like suburbs mm -hmm. outside of LA. But like it's it's kind of like in the Santa Clarita area, mm -hmm. so it's like I I actually live about twenty minutes away from my Six Flags. Oh okay. So it's like when you ever see like Six Flags, uh, L.A. It's definitely not in L.A. Just because on how crowded it is. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's, so it's in the Santa Santa uh kind of like the uh, Santa Clarita area. Which definitely is more easier on the traffic, gotcha. but it definitely still has its LA like hard traffic 
spots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, in uh, high school, I was in uh, what they call show choir. You sing and dance, um, and you do competitions. And we flew out to L.A. and did a competition my sophomore or junior year. And I was just, like, amazed. I don't know what highway it was, but I, I, there were so many lanes yeah. Uh, I was I just didn't even know they built highways that big it was just incredible to me yeah yeah so I actually think that wraps up the whole um a uh, uh, conversation okay but like partly because of like the time limit yeah we got two minutes and 40 yeah. seconds but uh, um like with zoom like after it's done it'll mm -hmm it'll so it'll uh convert it to like a like like it'll save the whole thing okay and it, it'll probably save it to your uh a computer okay at, so you can actually just send it okay no problem um well thanks for reaching out to me yeah Matt. Uh, taking the time to yeah talk records. I I, I definitely enjoyed the, this whole thing. Yeah, me too. So, uh, we'll have to do it again in the future. Maybe we can like do a, a different like a topic related to records or something. Yeah, discuss. All right. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks for the whole thing. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Yeah. All right. I want to try to see if I can end it. <laughs> see ya. Bye.